Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Lady Chow Fung for a special edition of Wuxia Weekend. Uh, we were wrapping up Karahoi Month, and we wanted to do an additional Karahoi movie because there were, what, only four uh, Fridays in this in this month, so we didn't get to do quite as many. And so we decided to do Lover's Blades, which is a 1982 film directed by Tony Lu Chun Ku, and it stars Kara Hui, uh, Meng Yuan Man, and Johnny Wang, and a number of other people as well, like Candy Wen. Um, it's got a pretty big cast. And so we, we, we both managed to get ourselves a copy, in fact, the same copy on eBay, which we're going to talk about, and we, and, we, and we watched the movie. But I don't know, before we get into our assessment of the film, should we, should we talk about some of the, uh, the quality issues we ran into with the version that we were watching? Uh, yes, we'll definitely have to uh, talk about that because I think it affects the viewing of the movie. Um, the quality of the film that we received was not necessarily the best. Um, it looks like it was probably copied from a videotape and put on a DVD and the uh, subtitles are cut off. And it's yeah. a little bit blurry and there's a, some a subtitle that in another language that they added on top, which is like bigger than everything else. Yeah. It looked like so Korean what, too. It looked like, I think that yes. was Korean. Um, and, it, and your eye is and it's yellow. So your eye is drawn <laughs> to that subtitle opposed to the English one that we were trying to watch. And there's no main menu. There's nothing you can do. This DVD starts and it just does its thing and there's nothing you can do to change it unless, I don't know, maybe Dion has a magical DVD player no, that's better than mine. I but, certainly don't have one of those. It but, just, movie just starts right away. So it, that was an understatement. This was one of the worst quality DVDs I've ever had. Aside from one, I got one movie once where like a, a third of the film was completely cut off on the left side, but this is one of the worst I've seen um, just in terms of the image quality. It was clearly, it's got to be a bootleg. It's definitely a bootleg or, or whoever has the IP was just doing a half ass job, but there's not even like a production company name on the DVD. Uh, it was the only one that was available and we really wanted to watch this movie. Um, so at least we did get access to it. Uh, it's a movie that I think would definitely benefit from a restoration because like like Lady Chao Fung was saying, it was a little hard to assess the, the film because we couldn't understand all of the subtitles and the image quality was very poor. Like it wasn't just that it was a, a VHS copy and you could see the lines every once in a while. The the image quality it was it was it was actually hard to see some of the actors' faces. Um, like you could tell who was who. But it, there, it was it was it was blurry enough at times that it took me a few seconds to figure out who was playing which character. Um, so so you know, with that said, uh, you know it you know that that definitely impacted our our impression of the film. Uh, but aside from that, what was your what was your take on the film, Dion? My take on the film is that it's a good movie. I like the um, the plot and the premise. And I love the actors who played it and the characters um, were really good, especially the um, four hero brothers. I, they were pretty um, funny. But um, yeah, I like the movie. I just wish it had been a better quality movie so I could probably would like it even more if it was better quality. Yeah, I, I would agree with that like 100% because... I felt like the, well, so I tried to watch it like two weeks ago when we first we first got this film, uh, you know, off of eBay, and and I I initially was so thrown off by the the quality of the of the of the DVD that I wasn't getting into it, and I gave myself a little time to go back to it, and then I went back to it this morning, and I really enjoyed it, and 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 I think I enjoyed it despite the quality. There was a time in my life where that where I could almost enjoy a film because of the bad quality of the transfer or something. Do you know what I mean? Like when I first mm -hmm. saw The Magnificent Bodyguards, it was a horrible, horrible transfer. And it had the same problem with certain subtitles being cut off. And I was with a bunch of friends and we were enjoying it because the subtitles were cut off and it was changing things. But I'm, I'm too old now and that just doesn't... I, I don't enjoy that as much. I like to know what's going on. And, and I like to know what the story is. And this is one where you really... like. I felt like there was a lot going on in the story and it really, you know, 
I, I, I was working very hard to understand all of the story beats just so that I would enjoy it. And I think I would have had that much more enjoyment from the film if I was catching everything without the subtitles being cut off. But it was I thought it was a I thought it was a really fun film and I really liked sort of the dramatic twist towards the end. I thought that that was a you know, it, again, it was kind of like the movie we did the other night, the uh, the Long Road to Gallantry. It had a lot of like just traditional wuxia elements that you expect. And the costuming is all spot on in terms of like this is it's a beautiful. Yeah. It would have been even more beautiful had the transfer been better. I mean, this the transfer just sets it up. It's a good film. And if you can get a really good copy of it, somebody please restore this to its original beauty because it's a really good film. It's just the transfer. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, and I would say it's also a movie, it has a large dose of comedy, so people should expect that going in because if, if you don't like the goofiness in your wuxia, you might be turned off by it. Um, there's a lot of really quirky characters and there's a lot of pratfalls, a lot of silly moments, but there's also a lot of drama. So it's kind of got, it's kind of got that thing where it just hits a lot of different notes over the course of the movie. And it's got the sound effects that sound like an old Pac-Man machine or something. So it's kind of like a, uh, a Buddha's palm or a, uh, um, uh, Holy flame of the martial world in terms of how it sounds. Uh, but it it doesn't quite rise to that level of Gonzo. Like those were two movies that were just like through the roof Gonzo Wuxia. This this gets there a little bit, but it's a little more restrained. It kind of feels like a um it feels like half comedy, half Wuxia is how it felt to me. Um, and I might be overestimating the amount of comedy just because so much of the subtitles were were missing in our versions. Um, but the basic premise is. Uh, it's 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 a cool i it's a cool concept it's something that you see a lot of it's kind of got like a heaven sword dragon saber thing thrown in and it it feels like it's a i i don't know what the source material was here but it feels like it's either based on a specific story or they're just drawing heavily on lots of different elements from like lewis jaw novels or something and 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 the basic premise is this chief named cho he has to go and escort the lovers blades which are two swords and they apparently uh, contain a, a, a secret that can make the users invincible. And so the emperor really wants this. So he has to escort it to the capital. And naturally, uh, he's going to be waylaid along the way. Initially, we're led to believe that the people that are trying to take the blade from him are just bandits. But they turn out to all be like wuxia heroes. They're all they're all trying to prevent the emperor from getting it and they want to present it as a present to this uh this guy named shah who's kind of like a great respectable hero in the area and everything sort of converges on a party that he's having where where the where the weapons are delivered to him as gifts and there's a lot more to it than that because we learn all about the guy's background the people that are seeking the blade all have their own personal stories and it's just kind of you know uh uh, it's just sort of a, a really great setup for for staging a lot of humorous scenes and a lot of spectacular fights, and and there's a lot of interesting characters along the way. Do you think I missed anything in that basic breakdown of the plot? No, that that covers it. It was yeah, it covers it. Um, so getting into it specifically, though, uh, one thing I want to talk about is the lovers' blades themselves because. It's it's obviously it's like a it's it's like a it sort of feels like a, a blend of Heaven Sword Dragon Saber and Jade uh, Maiden Sword Play, where the basic uh, the blades themselves when they hit each other they have some kind of special effect, right? Like the like when they clash, there's this reverberation and people are knocked back. So there's some special property about them when they meet, and I think it's because one is Yin and the other is Yang. But they also contain a secret manual in the hilt that teaches a swordplay style. And the reason they're called the Lover's Blades is because only devoted lovers can truly master the, uh, the, the technique. You have, to, you have to be genuinely in love with the other partner in order to use these two swords to their fullest. And, but and it's more than just that. It's more than just that hmm. you have to be genuinely in love with them. I think you have to be genuinely in love, but harmonious yeah and that you have to be compatible because we have two sets of lovers in this movie and one couple fights the whole entire time but the other couple 
is very cordial and you can tell that they're um, in love and they're very harmonious. So you, it can't just be any lovers. You have to meet very specific requirements and the blades will only work then. Yeah, and that's kind of, those are the two key beats in the movie for me is that they the first it ends up in the hands of this bickering couple, which I, 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 can't, I can't remember who played the man, but the, the woman was Candy Wen. And they were they were just like a delightful presence throughout the movie because oh, they were funny. Yeah, they 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 grab the blades at first, but they fight so much and 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 they enjoy fighting. The woman even says it adds zest to a marriage to to have all the, you know to to bicker. And and I think the man at one point says like you know ninety percent of the time we're fighting, and then ten percent of the time we're quarreling. Like they, they're just always fighting, and uh and 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 they get the blades, but they can never really figure out the secret to it. But then once it ends up in the hands of um, the Karahoi character, uh, I think her name was uh, Sui Gai Bao. And the Meng, Meng Yuan character, uh, scholar. Scholar, scholar Yuan, uh, they almost instantly figure out the technique because they're sort of made for each other. But then later in the movie, when they bring the swords to, uh, to Xiao, who's... Uh, we, we learn is um, Kara Hoi character's uh, father, and he has two wives, um, that uh, it's revealed that, that they're, they're actually possibly brother and sister. And so they can't, they, can't, they can't use this technique that they've mastered that makes them a perfect, both perfect pair of lovers and a perfect uh, uh, martial duo. Um, but the, they can't wield it because their feelings have changed. Yes. In, in finding out that their brother will quote unquote brother and sister through their family history because a whole bunch of stuff is revealed up to this point and then after we get another revealing yeah. but once they find out that they're brother and sister then their um, feelings toward each other change and they can't um, they wield the weapons but they're not working because they're not in that harmonious compatible compatible um, mode that they were in before because you know you as brother and sister your feelings change so they've completely changed the the technique it doesn't work yeah and and, and I really liked that part of the movie I liked this there was this just this sequence of reveals that happened and I have to admit the the brother sister reveal completely floored me I was not expecting that and, and, and the way that they discover it is because he, uh, uh, Scholar Yuan is carrying an heirloom and he when when when, when they go to the father, he has he, he has to duel with the father in order to in, get engaged with her. And they end up having both uh, uh, him and and uh, Guy Bao fight the father with the lover's blades in the duel. And then the, the father agrees to allow them to marry. And when they're about to marry, the mother say they have to exchange gifts. And so they both exchange the same heirloom, basically, like a matching heirloom that uh, reveals that the two wives are, are, are their respective mothers. And presumably he's their father. And so that makes them brother and sister. And one of the mothers is played by Teresa Ha Ping, which was, uh, which I, I, you know, I always love seeing her in movies. Uh, but then later we find out, and again, we're going to spoil the movie for you if we haven't already, that... <laughs> that the the Zhao character, who is supposed to be both of their fathers, he can't be their father because he's actually a eunuch, and he and he pulls off his mustache and his beard, and he reveals this big long backstory where he helped two heroes who are highly reminiscent of the um of the two fathers at the start of Brave Archer from the Legend of Condor Heroes mm -hmm. trilogy, and uh, basically uh, he 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 agrees to. Uh, to, to help them because they know the uh, they're in prison being tortured by the emperor because they might know where these lovers blades are and uh, and so he, he helps them they say they're happy to die and they just ask him to help protect their family so he goes and he 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 takes their wives into 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 sort of a he sort of secretly escapes with them one of them loses their child who we find out later is scholar Yuan and they pretend to be his wives and he pretends to be Xiao in order to uh, to to hide from the emperor, and it's it's a really clever setup, and it just I just love the way the backstory is revealed. I like the uh, I like all of the uh, drama that goes around it, and and I and I liked that they sort of they they drop this this Greek tragedy style bomb on you that they're brother and sister, but then they that they pull it back, and then they're able to actually be a, a married couple, which 
is a nice contrast to what we got last night or not last night um uh friday on on wuxia weekend when we talked about the long road to gallantry where where the where the couple had a a much more tragic ending no, I totally agree with that. I think the way they set it up was brilliant. Um, I didn't see the brother-sister thing coming either, and I didn't see the not-brother-and-sister thing coming either. And so um, it was great that they set that up in that way. And I like the way that they told the backstory on how they, the two wives and the eunuch ended up together it was perfect. Yeah, I, I I agree with that, and I and I like the um, uh, the the culmination of it at the end, where the, I think basically the way that they that they really use the blade is when they hold hands, and it 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 turns out like the blades start glowing red, and it like empowers them, and they're able to defeat the big bad guy played by Johnny Wang Lung, who's the uh, Imperial Chief Zhu character, who's kind of this menacing figure throughout the film, and. I want to talk about the martial arts, but then I do want to talk about his character and some of the funnier moments involving him. But what was your take on the martial arts in this film? I like the martial arts in this film. I just the whole premise of you know this the swords only being able to work if they were held by um, true lovers, and that they had to hold hands to really get the true power of it was really pretty cool. Even though it was kind of the glowingness was kind of, I don't know, totally 80s, I guess. Yeah. Um, the the effects are totally 80s. But I enjoyed it. You could see that they knew what they were doing in their, um, I'm going to bring out your word, footwork, and their wieldings of the sword. I didn't see anyone that, to me, looked like that like this might have been their first time um, actually doing kung fu and a lot of the actors i've seen in movies like tons of times uh they're not like the big stars but they're usually some important side character yeah in um the movies especially um in venom's movies quite a few of them have been yeah. in so it's just like they knew what they were doing and you could tell that they knew what they were doing. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of like very competent character actors in this movie because there's so many eccentric characters in the film. And and they're all just like, you know, they they're, they're all the kind of people who you won't always notice them when they're in a film. They might have like a standout role, but they but they're not like a big important character, but they're 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 just good at doing what they do and 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 they're and they're just, you know, very effective at the at the physical side of the performance or, you know, uh, if it's a you know somebody like Teresa Ha Ping, very very effective at the the bringing that level of charisma to the performance, and uh, and so you know I I, I I I I think I think you see it very strongly with the quarreling couple, um, you know that was uh, you know that that was you know th if those characters didn't work both in terms of their fighting abilities but also in terms of the humor with the bickering and the and the personalities it just wouldn't have it wouldn't have landed. Um, and I thought that the that the fights in general they they all looked very tight and the only thing that was a, because it's also comedic it was easy to lose sight of how 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 uh, how nice some of the fight choreography was because it would dip into these comedic moments and you would kind of uh, maybe not take it as seriously uh, but but I thought that overall it was it was it was good I guess my only criticism of it is. What one part of this movie that I think could have been better is it, it is some of the some of the physical humor didn't quite rise to the level that I would like to have seen. I think if I was going to be critical of the film, I would have liked to see better physical humor in it because I know I've seen films that have really good physical humor, and 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 th this had this had a lot of humor and stuff that made me laugh, but some of the physical stuff could have been a little bit better. I thought because sometimes the humor was just some guy somersaulting and getting hit in the butt. Um, and and I would have wanted a little more from that, but some of the humor that did work for me was the stuff that was going on with um, say the Johnny Wayne character when he gets poisoned, or I think he might have just been led to believe he was poisoned, and the scholar tells him that he basically has to take laxatives in order uh -huh. to you know well, that was a funny funny moment yeah that was and so he just downs these bowl you know bowl after bowl of these laxatives, but then he has to fight after 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 going through all that and it still kind of has this residual effect on him 
Uh, and so I thought that was humorous. I thought the quarreling couple was humorous. I thought the four swordsmen characters were, were really enjoyable. I love to- the four swordsmen characters. I thought the, um, that they were pretty funny in that they want to be so important and they tell everybody that they are um, these important masters of their craft. But when you actually see them fight the first time, you can tell that they're not. And so they're kind of inept, but they're still good, but they're inept to the point where they're comedic. Yeah. And, um, you know, the one guy, the cat face guy has this mustache that has whiskers that go up like a cat. And so he was um, he was funny looking. And yeah. then there was another one that had the mole on his nose. And that I don't know why that made me laugh, but he was funny. And then the old scholarly leader of the of the group just kind of was really laid back and didn't really always know what was going on. And then you have this really heavy set one that wears two pigtails. So yeah. just looking at them. They obviously aren't what they say they are. They want to be famous, so they're trying to do all these little feats along the way to get their names known. So their whole routine in the movie was just comedic, but yeah. wonderful. They were really good, um, a good fit for this movie. They really made it enjoyable. And the and the leader was like an opium master, so he was like a like a, like they, they called him the addict at certain points too. And I like the scene where he made this big dramatic show of like, I'm about to really lay it on you. And then he, mm-hmm. he shoots out his palm and it's got like a character written on it and it's all dramatic. <laughs> and then they all run away. And, and he's like, he's just, you know, they're just, they're, they're just kind of like charlatans a little bit. It was, it was, uh, uh, they, they added a nice, uh, a nice, uh, flavor to the movie. And I also kind of like the relationship. They, and there, there was a funny thing that happens where, uh, they bump into Kara Hoy's character and initially they try to take her horse from her. And when they explain why they're just looking for a gift to give to uh Shao for his party, you know, she, she says, Oh, okay, I'll give you a gift. And she gives them her hairpin. And then when she's with her mothers, they, they ask her where her hairpin is. And she says she gave it to somebody. And then later they, these four guys come and deliver the hairpin and they think that she's engaged to these four guys. And, <laughs> and then it turns out there's this other guy that she's in. So the, she, they think that she's courting five men and it's, it's played for laughs and it was really enjoyable. And, and, uh, uh, it was, just, I don't know. I just liked, I liked the, I liked the interplay between Kara Hoy and Teresa Ha Ping. And I think, um, I think her other, I guess her aunt, but the, the other wife of, of Zhao is uh Wong Mei Mei and I, I thought they just had a lot of chemistry in those scenes. Yeah, I I agree with that. I like the relationship that the the three ladies had with with each other and I like also the relationship that kind of Kara Hui develops a little relationship with the quarreling couple. Yeah. The quarreling couple end up realizing that those two were just better to have the blades and go out of their way to help those two be successful. Well, I kind of like how when we first meet the quarreling couple, they're kind of a little bit despicable. Like you think these people are just in it for themselves and they'd probably happily kill the heroes in order to get these blades if they could. But they turn out to be like two of the more remarkable heroes in the movie. They, they're they there at the final battle helping to save the day. And it's nice to sort of see them. One of the things I like about Wuxia movies like this is you can have characters who are quirky and a little bit mean sometimes, but still they're still heroes. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and I and there and these two characters are like that. And I also like the love story between Scholar Yuan and the Guy Bao character, so Kara Hui and Meng Yuan. The um I like that the the way they handled it was we didn't get this whole long thing where they have a courtship or anything. The way that they fall in love is when they first start practicing the techniques from the lover's blades. And they just seem to realize that they're a perfect fit for each other. And so there's like no need for any dialogue around it. They just kind of, you know, you could just tell they fall in love and that's, that's all that, that's all that you need. Um, I don't know. Did you feel the same way about that or did that not work for you? No, it worked perfectly for for me, I think that's the way it was supposed to go after they read the manuals um, and started practicing. I think that's what the manual was supposed to be as a guide to get the 
two most perfect people that could wield them and use their power together and for them to realize it without it. Because you don't always need a very long courtship to to know that two people are in love. It's just the way that they flow together. And you can see all throughout their, the battles that they have with the swords that their movements are complementary with each other and they just flow so gracefully with each other and that you could tell that they were meant to have them. Yeah, and I, I think I like that the um, that it plays to the strengths of the medium, which is that, you know, this is a, a genre where uh, where a fight a fight can just be a fight, but a fight can also reveal a lot about the characters. And so you can have a 10 minute fight where you don't need the dialogue and you don't need the exposition because it's all kind of explained through the fight choreography. And uh, and sometimes a fight is just a fight. But in this case, there was a lot going on in the in, the, in them practicing that technique together. And, and it really works visually. And I like the visuals that they use when they're, when they're really at the peak of the technique, when they kind of split up into like three mirror images of each other and they confuse their enemies. Mm-hmm. The, the visual really worked for me. And I like, again, this is, it seems to me like it's maybe based on Jade Maiden's swordplay from Return of Condor Heroes. And I like that. I, I, like, I like that kind of technique. It's something that's, that's a really cool aspect of the genre. And uh, and so it just the lover's blade just it worked so perfectly as a vessel for the story here. Um, so I was I was again I we can't emphasize enough the, the the version we watched was so terrible it was so hard to to see what was going on and we were struggling to read the subtitles because they were occasionally cut off at either end. Um, and and you would even get moments where like you could tell it was a video because you'd get those lines crisscrossing in front of the movie and it would kind of make it a little distorted but but i really had a, a good time watching this and i and i would say it was it was kind of a similar experience to what i had with long road to gallantry where it was just like a solid movie it's probably not like my favorite movie if i if i watched it in a better clearer version maybe i'd appreciate it even more um but it was just a really fun evening of entertainment and and uh and and i and i'm kind of glad that we ended Kara Hoy month on these two films that i think surprised both of us yes definitely a surprise a very pleasant surprise that they were um actually so good because for me if i don't see her in a movie that's with gordon Liu or you know not directed by my, one of my favorite directors, then it's kind of, you don't know what you're going to get because yep. she works so well with those people. But, you know, these two were very pleasant surprises. Yeah, because the director can really change everything. And if it's a director that you're not as familiar with or that you just don't, you don't really care for their movies, it can, you know, like I, th- there are some movies like that with Cheng Pei Pei where, you know, she's sort of wasted in a, in a movie that would have been, you know, she could have, they, 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 they should have put her in a better film. Um, and we didn't know what we were going to get here. And and I also like that both of these movies, as soon as you see the costumes, you know they're wuxia. Like, they just have that, like, yes. this is a wuxia movie. And, and and not all period pieces do that. Sometimes you watch a period piece, and you can't tell. Is this wuxia? Is it more kung fu? Is it is it more of a historical, uh, you know, sort of war movie? But with this one, the way that the wigs are set up, you just know this is wuxia. And, and, I, and, and one of the things I like about wuxia wigs is every actor seems to be given their own style of wuxia wig. Like, Alexander Fushung always has those bangs when he's in a wuxia uh-huh. movie. And Kara Hui always seems to have a sort of similar type of wig. And and so she's got like a similar, I think it's sort of similar to how she was in Eight Diagram Pole Fighter and in other movies where you've seen her in the wuxia garb. And and at the end of My Young Auntie, when she dresses in sort of the, the wuxia heroine outfit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's, maybe it's just because I really like wuxia. I, I, I like when a, wuxia, when a wuxia film sort of tells me this is a wuxia movie, you know, make no mistake about it you know and and that was kind of the experience i got with both of these films yeah the costuming was beautiful the colors were very complimentary um kind of uh, not yeah well a little bit flashy but very well done you know when you see a wuxia film you expect the colors and you expect the embroidery and because they are higher up officials you expect the regalness of the um, outfits, and so that's what you get. 
Yeah, no, I agree, and I and I loved. I, I mean, I said it before, but I really loved the eunuch reveal because that's a you see that so many times. There's so many movies where the guy peels off his mustache, and usually he ends up being a villain at that point. And I love that we had the eunuch who's the hero here. Uh, I'm sure there's. I'm sure that there are movies where that's the case. I just don't remember them or I haven't seen them. But but th- th- to me that was a really cool surprise, like a eunuch character that was the hero who 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 pretended to be married to these two women in order to save them. I had so many questions about that relationship. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like I was. Yeah. I and 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 in an, an hour and thirty minutes, there's no way the film could ever answer them. But I wanted to know, like, do, do these people have, like, affection for each other? Are they essentially, like, uh, a married group at this point? Or, or, are, they, or are they, you know, or, or is this, a, uh, uh, you know, just a pure charade, but they all respect each other's heroic qualities? And, 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 and it was something that I don't think the movie really told us, based on what oh, we saw. Oh, I felt that they were really um, a true loving family together and not just bound by respect but i think that in the two women raising kara hui and you know her saying that their her parents never quarreled yeah. to the married couple and you know her explanation to them just showed that they were loving it wasn't just out of respect or necessity but that they really truly had feelings to each up for each other and then you know when the first big reveal happened that their brother and sister everybody's kind of all distraught over the whole situation and i think it because they had the feelings for each other that they wouldn't have necessarily been that distraught if it was just out of respect and convenience so but i think that they really built a tight-knit family and kara's um character really loved her father in air quotes um, to the point where it just everyone was well connected, and then them all singing at the very end. I thought that was a little strange that they had a little sing along yeah. at the end of the movie, but it kind of works to show their loving relationship. You know what? I think you're right. I think I was wrong because I forgot about that thing that she said to the quarreling couple, and that really does kind of emphasize the point. And when you see her and her mother and her aunt together, they clearly are a loving family. And there's clearly a lot of mutual respect among everybody. And when I feel like they they were treating him like their husband, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he was treating them like his wives. And I think that's interesting because obviously he's a eunuch, you know, so it's like uh, it's it's it's. uh, it's an interesting uh, concept that I just I, I, I don't feel like I've really seen before. Um, and again, if somebody's listening and there's another movie or book where they know this comes from, feel free to point it out because I'd really, I, I, I'm really interested in, in the lineage of this film because it seems to, you know, there's certain things I can sort of see where it might have come from. But a lot of times you'll discover, oh, no, it wasn't actually their blending Return of Condor Heroes and Heaven Sword Dragon Saber. They were just basing it on this other book that was heavily inspired by those two sources. So uh, I always like to hear from people who can point out uh, what this might have been taken from. Um, but in fact, I might even revise my my review here. I, I said it wasn't a great movie and it was going to be sort of like a B, like the other one. I think this was actually a little better than Lo- Long Road to Gallantry in some ways. Um, I think I I think they were both enjoyable movies, but the the dramatic surprises really genuinely floored me. And and I was so engaged at the end of the movie, like of wanting to know how it turns out that I was on the edge of my seat. And and so I, I I think based on that I would have to elevate the review a little bit, um, but but both were pleasant surprises to me. I was I was uh, I, I'm very happy that this is how we ended the Karahoi month because it would have really genuinely sucked if we got like two movies that were just bombs. Do you know what I mean? It would have mm-hmm. it would you know it, it's it it it, it was uh, and, and and these were two movies we didn't quite know what to expect going in so. Um, so I, 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 I was, uh, I, w- I was pleasantly surprised here. And, uh, and, and again, I, 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 I made a point of not exploring what other people online thought of Lover's Blade because I had no, I, it was one of these movies where I saw it and I was like, well, I could see this going either way. <laughs> like I could see it being something that's universally panned or universally praised or is incredibly divisive. And I thought it would be better not to, not to even get a sense of that and to just, uh, just sort of 
you know, give my response before I find out what other people thought. Um, and and again, I, 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 if anybody does know of a better version of this that's out there, please let us know because this is a film I'd like to see it in a in a more preserved state or a more restored state if there is such a copy available. Uh, you know what I would like to see? I would actually like to see like a remake or a reboot of this movie with um, newer technology used to get the um, beach, uh, the strength of the swords um, in a different kind of light. Like we did with, um, what did we just watch? Uh, oh, a Chinese ghost story. Yes, how that was updated. I would yeah. like to see how someone would update and make changes to this film because I really in, did enjoy the update of um, Chinese Ghost Story. And you could see the differences and you could see the similarities, but yeah. they were good films on their own. So I would like to see um, someone update this one and uh, see what changes they would make yeah, in the I, movie. I agree. I agree. I think I think an update would be cool, provided it's done in a good way. If uh, if it's uh. If it's sometimes the updates don't yeah, quite hit the sorry. mark, uh, but but I think a serious attempt to to update this film would be appreciated. Um, like I think in the hands of like a um, like a like I don't know like a uh, uh, I don't know how how what what style of movie would you like to see this done as if it were remade? Like would you want to see them lean more on the on the um, on the story, or would you want to see them lean a little bit on the comedy? Like because I could see it going differently depending on on how. Well, I definitely lean. wouldn't lean too heavily on the comedy. I I think that this was the perfect amount, and I think it was more like one third comedy and two thirds wuxia. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that if they would have to leave the ratio of comedy the same and just leave it more of a wuxia movie in that case i would want stephen chow to make it i think i think stephen chow would be a good choice because he's good at getting the humor and the heart and this movie is is a is a remake i think would benefit from that a lot um because it does it does i think the thing that that makes it work for me at the end is the heart where you have like the you know sort of like you were saying this loving family that's sort of unified um and 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 uh, and so I, I feel like uh, especially with sort of like the love story and the reveals, I think that I think that would all work very well with with Stephen Chow as director, though I could see a much more serious take because when I was that scene where Kara Hui runs away when she finds out that he's her brother, mm -hmm. it reminded me so much of uh, Curse of the Golden Flower. Um, yes, yes, so, yes, yes. And so I could see it like I could see a director saying, well, we're going to. We're going to emphasize this aspect of the movie. Um, the seriousness. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Well, I, I think that would be good too. I just think don't think that it would be good for a director who would do full-on comedy. Yeah. I think a full-on comedy would ruin it. Well, and Stephen Chow does lean heavily on the comedy, but I feel like he could get the the – he can blend the lightness and the sentiment together in a way that I thought would work with this movie because this movie did seem to be about almost half comedy at times. Do you know what I mean? But the but the the stuff with the story and the reveals and the and the um, and just kind of the warmth w would would also play into his strengths. But I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm misguided there. Uh, but but yeah, I, I I I quite enjoyed myself with this one, and I I think that uh, I I think that again it was a pleasant surprise, and I would I would definitely recommend it to people. But I can't recommend the version that we got. Like the version we got was so so bad that I I'm sort of stuck. I don't know how we would, uh, you know. I think we need to encourage people to lobby Celestial Pictures to put out a a, a restored a better... version. Yeah. I, think, I agree. I think that's what needs to happen. Um, I think this was a movie that would would so benefit from that. Uh, may, maybe there is a restored version that we don't know about, but we we didn't see. I don't think I, we looked a lot for this movie, and we had we had trouble. Um, but but watch, we'll go online tomorrow, and people will like. There'll be like a Dragon Dynasty version that's like <laughs> widely available, um, and we'll like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll be very well. I'll be pleased and upset if I learn that that's the case. Um, 
But anyways, we, we've been going on for 40 minutes, and this is a special episode, so we want to end it here. Um, but this was Kara Hoi Month, and so, you know, th- this is, again, this is an actress that I think we all we all seem to like, and we definitely would encourage people to go check out her, her material. Um, she's She continues to make films. She's still relevant. Um, but you can go back and watch these classic movies and, and see some really great performances. Aaron, did you have any closing thoughts before we head out? No. All right, so so we will leave it there, and we will be back on next week with Black Magic, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, I, I I like Halloween, I like October, and and we're gonna have a lot of fun stuff lined up for our Black Magic month. So uh, so stay tuned, and uh, until next time, we will talk to you later. Mm-hmm.